What's up, y'all? Ian here, Half Cut Garage. Welcome back. If you haven't seen part one, two, and three, go back, watch them first, get a little context. I'm painting the micro today. You are going for a ride. Part four, epic jet boat fall recovery. Let's go. So you see us get back to our base camp at the Gato. Here it is. Me and Kevin slept under the stars overnight. The other boys slept in the boat with the diesel heater. It's all good. I don't blame them. We were warm. It was nice and comfortable. We got a wicked fall. We got Dale's boat cleaned up, pulled most of the stuff out of it, shoved a whole bunch of stuff in garbage bags. We get kicked off. The plan is Matthew is Taryn's son. He's driving the Schumann. He's to follow whichever boat is in second. My plan is to get to going as quick as I can and get down to the Toshodi landing and grab the empty fuel drum that the boys left at the Toshodi landing so that nobody has to stop. That way the whole train keeps on moving, everybody just follow one another, we're not taking any risks today. That was the plan.
shot. There's not much to it. It's just a slight little to the right and the current takes you and then you just stay along in the main channel and away you go. No problem at all. I look over my shoulder and something ain't right. We were coming in a little hot. Matthew come a little wide around the corner. I'm not making any excuses. Ultimately, at the end of the day, it was my own fault. I probably was going a little bit too fast. He missed the corner. Into the trees he went. From this point on, I wouldn't say panic set in, but get her done set it in. Film in comes second. Second. Here's a couple of quick clips of me ripping. I got this thing to the pin. The chainsaw, the capstan winch is in the firefish, and I need to catch it. And he's not supposed to stop. So here I go. Little did I know, we don't have any footage of this. Remember how I foreshadowed earlier about that boat hopping out of the water? Lo and behold, that bouncing out of the water popped something loose, the whole boat died. That's how I wound up catching him. I caught him, the whole boat was dead. We pulled it up on shore, got the capstan winch and the chainsaw, made sure the bilge pump was running, the anchor was set in the sand, and away we went back up to get the other boat that was filling up with water because the back corner was underneath the water line and she was going, fixing to go under, I figured. So we got the tree cut, and believe it or so not, it good untied the rope, and Stop that boat that. just slid right back on into the water. The current swapped ends, pulled it out from behind that log. Life was grand, except for we were having stator issues. Forgot to mention that on the way up, eh? Anyhow, we wound up boosting it for about 15, 20 minutes, managed to get it to run, I pulled away here, as you can see, started floating down. Look over my shoulder again. Guess what? She died. Get line ready if it won't start. Wow, what a scramble, eh? Good thing that thing didn't back into a bank in a bad awkward angle or something like that. But anyhow, now that we're finally hooked back up, I figure we got a good hour or two hours pulling, get back down to that firefish. I honestly wasn't concerned about it. I figured we had it far enough up on the bank that if it took on water, enough water, it would just sit there on the bank.
here's what happened. Here's my take on it. We nosed the boat in. We thought we were good. As it took on water, the back end sank, sank, sank. In turn, which we were watching the front, the bow pull up. It probably leveraged the anchor enough and pulled the anchor in enough that it managed to slide back. It sat in that hole. I didn't even realize that hole was there. My fault. Fucking bilge pump quit while we were gone rescuing the other boat. What did we do from there? The boat's sitting like this, right? The only thing I figured that we could do. We hooked onto the bow of it. We started dragging it downstream. Shouldn't say we, it was me and the mini. We hooked onto that thing and we drug it, we drug it, and we drug it. And lo and behold, it, I drug it onto shallow ground until it come up and it was sitting and the water line was back to here. It just tobogganed right up on up. We hopped in, started bailing and bailing and bailing until the thing started floating. Once it started floating, it two boys hopped in her. They kept on bailing. Bilge pump was going, bail, bail, bail. It floated down. I shoved Kevin off in the Schumann with the dog. He started floating down and I just picked up the remnants. There was, there was some stuff floating around, some fuel jugs, some stuff like that, some life jackets. We scavenged everything we could possibly see. We tried to leave the landscape just as we, as we had come across it. And uh, yeah, now on to the next part of our journey. As you see, I'm now not pulling only one, but two with that mini jet. Here we go. smokes y'all one two three boats are floating again we sank those two today holy smokes what a day couldn't ask for a better spot to camp though mouth of the tetsa for the night i guess till we can find a boat 
we pulled these two down. I've been pulling these two since the Toshodi, just about all by my lonesome. One day recovery. It's turning into a shit show day number three. Still only the second day. Tomorrow, we have all sorts of stuff that could go wrong. It's a new day. A new day. More shit show. It's more. Well, that's a wrap for this one, you guys. There's a little bit more left that I'm going to put in part five. But I figured it'd be too long for this episode here. So somebody asked me the other day, Fort Nelson's froze up. How come you do how can you do this video? Well, indeed, we are froze up. This one's from the fall. Like, share, subscribe. It's all free. It doesn't cost you a dime. It helps me out. Make sure you come back next week for part five. That's a wrap. Here's some clips from next week. Thank <laughs> you.